the, let's just talk a little bit about the innovations that are coming out in mobile um, uh, transactions. What, what, are, what can we expect um, in 2017 um, and, and where have we come from in the last year? All right. So it's actually quite an interesting space at the moment, very exciting, a lot happening. And I think one of the, the things that we're seeing, which, which is actually quite nice from a South African point of view, is that some of the authentication that we're using in this country, for example, if you see that most of the banks that we're using here is now starting to be adopted as the world standard. Uh, we're seeing that most of the, the authentication mechanisms that we use in South Africa at the moment, Gartner is predicting that it will be used by 80% of the world market by 2020, where you know, up from less than 10% today. And actually that just shows again, you know, that South Africa from a financial services point of view, we're actually quite on the lead with that. Now, if you think about what, what we're saying there is that authentication and services are moving to the mobile. It's becoming the centerpiece of everything we do. So more and more services are moving towards that. Um, I think some of the trends that we're looking at, uh, you mentioned payments, definitely a strong move towards that strong move, uh, press from all the card associations, visas having a, a strong push with uh, visa checkout, MasterCard with MasterPass, uh, driving take up on, you know, to be able to pay from the mobile. Uh, and then some of the other things that we're seeing is converged service services. So what I mean by that is, uh, if you look at services that you actually provide as a service provider to your end user, um, users are starting to question what value are you actually giving me as my service provider? And if I can't get something from you, I'll go somewhere else. So it's becoming actually quite competitive in that space. Um, traditional battle lines becoming gray at the moment. Uh, if you, if you look at some of uh, you know the telcos moving into banking, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon moving from online into into the real world, so uh, I think this year is actually going to be quite interesting in that space where uh, there's going to be quite disruption in terms of some of these mobile services coming out because suddenly uh, someone in the U.S. is competing with you here in South Africa where it, it wasn't really possible. Sure. Um, so. Um, that's definitely something that we're seeing that converged uh, services. So instead of just doing something like banking for your, I'm um, doing banking, your health insurance, everything kind of as a converged uh, offering to the end user. That's, that's definitely something that I think this year is going to start uh, becoming more prevalent. And then 2017 also being the year of AI. Uh, your digital assistance coming uh, sharply into focus. Um, everyone I suppose being quite excited about having their own Jarvis, you know, from Tony Stark's uh, world uh, at your beck and call any anytime, every time, what you want to do, being able to do that. Um, but as we move more to the mobile, one of the really key things that we need to take into account is, of course, security. And the reason I say that is, I think I always use this example to, to bring that point home. When we started in 2012 with some of our customers, uh, there was a very big fraud problem with, um, you know, selling prepaid airtime via the online and mobile channel. And at the time, one of our banking clients, when we asked them what their fraud figures looked like, they said, we don't have any. We asked them, how do you accomplish that? They said, well, very simple, we don't offer it. Mm. And, and that's the problem. If you have a security problem, it limits what you're capable of doing. People don't trust it, and then they don't use it. So uh, using security as that base layer of enablement is going to come really sharp into the focus. Um, you'll see on a global scale that there's this trend, as I mentioned earlier with Gartner, of using the phone as that center of the security universe to enable everything from that mobile phone. And if it's like you think, a key. It's like a key to... It's pretty much like the key to all yeah. your digital services. And it's not just passwords. It's also using your finger and uh, thumbprint to, to open things. And, and, I, and, and I read that they're talking about doing um, um, I recognition and, and vein recognition and it, oh, gets, yes. it gets really uh, quite, quite interesting. Absolutely. I mean, there's the, you know, the selfie pay that MasterCard yeah. uh, and MasterCard is, is, is playing with. So uh, effectively, if you think about security and good security principles, um, we all refer to the something you have and something you know. Yeah. And what we're seeing is that the mobile phone is very strongly becoming the de facto standard for the something that you have. Mm. Um, whereas the something that you are or something that you know mm. is used in combination with that to actually then really verify that you are who you say you are. So 
to put that into a practical uh, you know, application, yeah. uh, I would have to, if I, if I need to compromise, you s physically steal your phone and you know, compromise a, a password or, or a biometric. Just from a, a fun point of view, the, the, the virtual reality and, uh, and headsets are, are, are all the rage at the moment, and it looks mm -hmm. like that's where we're going next with, with gadgets. How can you interlink the, the way that you guys think security with, with, with that type of technology? That's, that's quite an interesting one. Um, I think what it comes down to is, you know, maybe to Skulk's point around inter Internet of Things. Uh, when, you, when you think about any wearables, because I think wearables kind of fall into the same category, um, it, it comes down to how these things talk to each other. And effectively, uh, when, whenever you want to do something sensitive, uh, you know, on one of these wearables, or one of these wearables, as, you know, to Skulk's point, wants to, to order you know, uh, milk from the fridge, mm. for example. Um, it needs to kind of come down to w someone that actually says, yes, this is actually what I want to do. So there needs to be some sort of security in place. And again, in terms of interlinking linking these, uh, these different wearables, it's going to become very important to make sure that whenever something happens on those devices, there's a, a rule in place that actually says what is possible on it, and then if something out of the ordinary, ordinary happens, uh, that it still comes back to someone that says, you know what, I'm in control, this is what I want to do, no, I don't want to do that. And that's kind of how we see it, is to always, whenever something out of the ordinary happens or something uh, happens that not necessarily fits the pattern that, uh, you know, that you might be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, that it comes back to your trusted mobile and you say, yes, I want to do this, or no, wait, this isn't actually what I want to do. So effectively, putting that control back into the user's uh, palm, I suppose, is going, to be, is going to be quite important when it comes to all these uh, interlinked devices, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah.